Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. So today we're going to learn how to do a faux or false hamon etch on this pocket knife blade. The pocket knife of choice is the Kaiser Raja. It's one of my favorite knives, but here it is close up. And as you guys can see, there's a lot of real estate here since it is a long blade. And we're going to do the hamon etch on both sides of the blade to get that complete finished look. And before I started recording this video, I did end up washing the blade with hot water and dish soap just to get rid of any of oils that might ruin or affect our uh, etching finish. And another tip I highly recommend, don't ask me how I know this, but is to dull the cutting edge. And I usually just dull the edge on my, uh, my clamp there. There's a little flat surface there and I just use it to go back and forth and dull the edge since we will be etching and stone washing the blade and we'll have to resharpen the blade anyway. So that is one thing I highly recommend. But I'm going to give you guys a very close look here on the table in just a moment. But before I begin, I will just give you guys kind of a rundown of what I like to use. And from there, I'm going to show you step by step of how I like to do this finish or this look. So let's get to the table and do just that. So here is the layout of the bench. So I like to have my ferric chloride and apple cider vinegar mix just right here next to me. And I like to do 75% ferric chloride and 25% apple cider vinegar. I think it just it etches it very well, in my opinion. Then you're gonna have Windex to sterilize the acid once, once we etch and do our thing. Then we, of course, are gonna need some clear nail polish I like clear, but you can use different colors. It doesn't really matter. We have lacquer thinner to clean the nail polish once we're done etching. And of course we have the blade. And finally, gloves. Gloves come in handy because you don't get oils back onto the blade and it just keeps your, uh, your skin safe, if you will. So I'm gonna bring you guys over to the blade and I'm gonna show you step by step with the nail polish. All right, so now that we have a closer look at the blade, I'm gonna have my nail polish ready. And one thing I did do with the nail polish is I added some lacquer thinner just to thin it out a bit to where it's a lot easier to work with and create that hamon pattern. Also, one more thing you're going to need is just any object really to have it angle just a bit more. That way, when you rest the blade onto the paper towel, it's not affecting the hamon pattern that you put on there. And once it's fully dry, then I'll touch the tip of where it is touching on the paper towel. So I'm going to go ahead and shake up the nail polish just a little bit. And again, it is nice and runny. That way it's going to be very easy to do this. But if you want a, an idea of what to or what style hamon to put on your blade, you can always Google search hamon or a hamon finish on blades. And you can kind of decide what you want or what you think is going to look best on the knife. And one thing I do like about this blade shape is it's very long. So I want to get quite a few peaks in the Hamon uh, look or pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do that and just speed up the process so you guys don't watch it. But I'm going to just take a few breaks and point out some things while I'm doing it. So here we go. Okay, so now that I have the basic layout, I'm going to give you guys a close-up look. I'm going to do my best uh, to get this on screen for you guys. Maybe I should have used a different color for <laughs> video editing purposes, but as you can see right here, the, the peaks aren't as sharp as I'd like them to be. But one thing about this is that I can make them sharper, but this is just kind of a basic layout. So I'm, I'm almost happy with it. So what I'm going to end up doing is making these peaks. You can see right here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Now what's really cool about the nail polish being thin is you can actually go over and create those sharper peaks or more peaks if you'd like. And one thing about Hamon finishes that I've seen on blades is it kind of starts at a lower point in the back. And then it goes a little bit higher to the tip of the blade. So I'm actually going to bring it up just a little bit higher here too. But this is where you kind of fine tune your hamon finish. So you can 
you can get as picky as you'd like. If you really don't like it, which I've done a few times, you can always just wipe this off with some lacquer thinner and just restart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fine tune this to what I like and I'm going to end up doing both sides. And I'm going to do that really quick for you guys and then we'll pick up from there. All right, so I'm satisfied with the pattern that I created. And as you guys can see, it's still kind of sticky here, but uh, before I dip it in the ferric chloride, I'm going to put just a dab of nail polish there. But that is the reason why I like to use this little object here to keep everything off of it. But here is the, the pattern that I chose. As you can see, it goes from thinner in the back to fatter or wider up front. And then on the other side, same thing. So thinner in the back, wider in the front. And I made sure to also go under where the two patterns connect. And then also in or on the tip of the blade there, which is hard to get. Next time I do another video, I'll definitely do different colored nail polish because clear is definitely not showing up. And also don't forget to do the contact point where the liner lock surfaces or touches the end of the tang here. It's not the end of the world if you forget that, but just keep in mind that ferric chloride removes just a little bit of material. So it might affect the lockup just a tad. It's not crazy though. And before I put it into the ferric chloride, I am gonna do the nail polish over or around where the bearings ride. So you can see the bearing path there. And people usually do the, the track of where the ball bearing rides. I, I really don't worry too much about that because once it's etched and finished, it'll create that track again and it doesn't really affect anything. You might have to later on go in and clean it, but again, not a big issue. So with that being said, I'm going to put some nail polish on the bearings area and then I will show you exactly how I do it in the ferric chloride. All right, so the nail polish is all dry. And I made sure to get where the bearings ride, the contact surface where the liner lock surface is with the tang. And then I also did that Hamon pattern. I did touch up the tip, so that's nicely covered. And I'd like to just use, I should be using a plastic bar, but I have a little metal bar with some metal wire to hold the, the blade just the way it is. And before I put it in the jar, I like to make sure before I even do this whole process that my blade is deep enough, but not deep enough to where the tip is actually hitting the glass uh, canister here or the glass jar. And when I drop it in, I'm gonna give it a couple taps just to get the air bubbles off. Because one thing I did learn is if you don't shake it and the air bubbles are on there, then it affects the, the etch of the blade. So I'm gonna dip it into the jar here. I'm gonna raise it up just a bit. And once it goes in, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in and out a few times. So I'm going to do that really quick. So we're going to go just like that, make sure it gets covered. And then we're going to go up and down just a few times to make sure the, the areas that need to be covered are covered. And you can always inspect it. Just make sure not to hold it too long out or halfway out and halfway in because it will affect the etch. And then now I'm just going to give it a couple taps to get those air bubbles off. And then what I'm gonna do is let it sit in here for about, I'd say three to four minutes, a good three to four minutes. And then I'm gonna show you exactly what I do after this step. All right, so it's been exactly four minutes. And periodically in those four minutes, I was kind of dipping in and out and shaking every now and then, but it is ready, I think. So I'm gonna do this pretty quick. I do have my little uh, milk jug that I've been using for a while, as you can see. I have my Windex ready. So I'm gonna put it towards the edge, that way I can get a good full spray on the blade here. It'll neutralize the, the ferric chloride. So here we go, I'm gonna do it right now. Pull it out, get the excess ferric chloride off. And really quick, I'm gonna show you guys really fast. You can actually see the pattern on there. So look at that, that's pretty cool. But let's immediately spray it. That way we neutralize that acid. And I like to spray it pretty good because I really want that 
perichloride to stop etching the steel. And I make sure to get pretty thorough with this. Because again, you really don't want that stuff to keep etching. So there it is. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go inside and I'm just going to wash it with warm water. That way I can get all the uh, stuff that doesn't need to be on there. There is going to be a slight residue. I'll see if I can show you guys here on the camera. But I'm going to wipe with my finger here. You can see that residue there. So that's what I'm going to go at the sink. Or that's why I'm going to go at the sink to get rid of that. And then I will be right back and show you guys the result. So here is the blade all washed. Used warm water to wash everything off. And as you can see, there are some areas where the ferric chloride didn't touch. I thought I cleaned it good enough, but good thing we'll be etching this a second time, so I'll be able to get that. And then you can see some areas where the ferric chloride didn't get. But I'll show you a trick on how to get the ferric chloride in there on the second, on the second dip of the ferric chloride. And that's really the only issue. But before I clean all the nail polish off and all that stuff, what I'm actually going to do is stone wash it with the homemade, uh, I think this is peanut butter jar. This is plastic. And all I did was put some ceramic pellets. And I'll leave a link down below where you guys can pick up these exact pellets that I use. But you can use stone, you can use rocks, anything you find outside really, just small enough. But I'm going to stone wash that right now. And I'm just going to plop it in there. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take it out and show you guys uh, what it looks like. And then I'm going to show you the whole process of etching it a uh, second time. So here it is after I stone washed it. And I got to say it looks pretty good already. So you could end up leaving it like this if you're a fan of that look. Where you have that high contrast against the stone washed area. But those areas that weren't really touched by the ferric chloride are kind of blended in now that it's been stone washed but the second dip will take care of it. And then over here on the inside of this fuller, uh, the ferric chloride did not touch it. So what I'm gonna do before I fully dip it in is I have a used toothbrush here and I'm gonna dip it into the ferric chloride and actually rub it in there. And then there is, there are some areas here in the jimping where I'm gonna touch it up. And then that's when I'll fully dip the piece into the ferric chloride. Now before I do that, since I did end up cleaning everything and I wiped off all the nail polish where I want the ferric chloride to affect it, so now it is completely clean. And what I need to redo is the pivot hole and where the bearings ride, and then the contact area where that liner lock locks the tang of the blade. So. I'm going to do that again really quick, the nail polish, and then I'm going to show you guys what I do after this is all said and done. So now that I put nail polish on the important parts, on the contact where the liner lock is, and then also where the bearings go, so we are good to go there. And really quick, upside down, I'm going to take this blade upside down, and again, I'm going to use that toothbrush, dip it in the ferric chloride, rub it in the areas where it hasn't gone inside and usually that happens because of the surface tension but once this breaks it once i dip it back in there it'll it'll get in there and actually etch it so that's what i'm going to do really quick and then i'm going to hang it back on to this bar with the wire and then i'm going to dip it in and then i'm going to do maybe 30 seconds to a minute on the second etch because i i don't want the Hamoned section to be as dark because that would defeat the purpose, but it'll be just slightly uh, lighter and then you'll be able to see the difference. I have a fresh pair of gloves on so I don't get oil anywhere else, but here we go. I'm going to dip it in the ferric chloride here. And again, I'm going to be quick about this and I don't want to splatter any of the ferric chloride onto the blade, so we are going to be as quick as possible. So I'm just going to put it in there. Again, breaking that surface tension. Do the other side. This is always the scary part. But that is done. Whoops. 
I don't want to drop everything else, but we're going to slide that in there, wrap it around, and again, same thing, dip it in a few times. That way we can get the uh, ferrochloride where it needs to get. Shake it a few times, get those air bubbles off. But we don't have to worry about it this time too much since I don't want to fully etch that, that nail polish covered area. So I'm just going to do this in real time and you guys can see how fast it's going to etch that section. And it's okay to pull it out and get a quick look at it. And it is starting to darken a little bit. So just double checking, making sure there's no air bubbles. So my phone says it's been recording for three and a half minutes. So what I'm gonna do is let it go to four minutes or maybe not even that long. But this is the hard part, being patient and then trying to find the sweet spot. But the more and more you do this, eventually you'll get it down to where exactly you like it. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna immediately spray it with Windex. So get that done real quick. All right, so now that it's all sprayed down, I'm gonna go do the same thing and go wash it in some warm water. And once it's all clean, we'll get a close look exactly what's going on here. So I ended up stone washing it already. Here it is. Give you guys a close look. That bottom section is nicely stonewashed. And for some reason, this area didn't want to etch, even with that little trick that I did. But I've noticed with certain blades, the more cutouts and fullers and jimping that they have, things don't tend to come out exactly the way you want them to. But I think it looks okay. I think it goes pretty well with that hamon since it is lighter. But here's the other side. You can see in this section and this fuller, it did get it, but it didn't get it there in the front. So it's not a terrible thing. I think it still looks really good. As always, let me know down below what you guys think of how this thing turned out. But one thing I do like about this Hamon, this false Hamon etch, is at certain angles it vanishes, as you can see right there. And then from another angle, it's darker and then brighter. So I think it's just a really, really cool finish on a blade. And I hope this video helped you guys out on how to achieve this, or if you guys are even a fan of this look. But overall, I'm uh, pretty happy with it. All right, so that is all there is to it, you guys. It's that easy. But honestly, it's, it's something that requires a bit of patience, and I highly recommend you choose a day where you have quite a bit of time to experiment or do this, because it takes around... Since I was filming, it took a little bit longer, but it shouldn't take more than an hour, maybe hour and a half. And again, if you do quite a few of these, or you can always experiment on just a chunk of cheap steel and see what you get with uh, just different, different attempts at trying something else. Um, if you guys know of something else, let me know down below if you guys figured out a different pattern or what might look cool or any suggestions. But I am uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll give you guys another, another close look. But I'll leave a, a nice video or a, a couple really good pictures of the outcome once I'm done sharpening it. And one thing I also want to mention is after I'm done sharpening it, I'm going to hang it, spray WD-40 on it, and let it soak for a, a good couple hours. I tend to do this towards the end of the day. That way I can let it soak overnight, which makes the, the etch a lot darker. It'll look a lot richer. So again, I'll leave a quick quick video of the fully finished result. But that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.